Bombs. So um, last week we did the puppy test and um, they were out with the puppies and they're doing better. They're starting to leave us now, which is nice. We're getting to be more and more work every day. Um, as I said before, you know, we're doing a puppy test and yes it is about the dog, but it's more, I feel, about the breeder, about our techniques, our mythology and everything else. And when we came to Denmark and, and, and we, we decided what we were going to do, we've got a mythology that's reasonably successful. Um, what we decided to do was split up that mythology so you can see how it all comes together. Um, because as I say, it, it, yes it is about the dog, but it really is about our knowledge of a breed, our knowledge of the genetics, the imprinting, the, the, the association between certain things, uh, what's that called, conditioning. It really is, it is, and this is how we can change our technique and, and see where the different methods work, etc. So the first litter we had eight puppies um, in Denmark. We just concentrated on a very small segment of our mythology, and that was um, play and contact. That was it, socialisation, in other words, play and contact. And when we did the puppy test, you can see the results of that. They did very, very, very well. But where they failed was on sound. And funny enough, as soon as we put up our puppy results, the first comments we were getting, or a few comments we were getting on that on various forums, was that sound is all genetic. Dog's acceptance of sound is genetic. 80% genetic, someone wrote, I saw. And there's nothing you can do about it. Um, if that was the case, because a couple of months later or so, we, we went and did um, 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 the mental description for the older dogs. Then if it was genetic, then how come those dogs can pass? Uh, so that's, that's one question. Um, and there are nothing but questions in raising dogs. But what we did with this litter was we added, as well as play, as well as um, contact, we added sound. This is another stage of our mythology. Does that change the results of the puppy test? Well, last time we did eight puppies without the sound, and they all 100% failure on sound. This time we've got nine puppies, and we have 100% success on sound. They all scored top marks, the highest. It wasn't like there was twos and threes on sound and the rest. It was all up there at the top end. So that would say there's something to that. There's more than something to it. It's proof positive, isn't it? It is, you know, one litter is 100% against. This litter is 100% on the sound. Um, and that is total proof. So if you're talking about genetics, then suddenly Pennell Claybonds from being having a lousy genetic with sound now has the best genetics in Scandinavia when it comes to sound. It's got nothing to do with genetics. Or it is. The dogs are disposed to certain uh, traits. But we can raise those traits, we can lower those traits. And we can do it with the puppies. And it becomes set in their life at the end of the day. As I said, this is for people who want to... Um, for many people, gun sounds is very, very, the gunshots for the breed clubs is very, very important. This is a very simple exercise. It's basically guaranteed. Um, you take the puppy, you practice once a week, once a fortnight, whatever, just to, and it's, when I say practice, you're walking down the street banging a balloon. That's it. Boom, your dog's going to pass a gunshot. And you cannot tell whether it's conditioning, training. It's certainly not training. You can tell it's not training. Or whether that's imprinting going on. We know it's not genetic because we know already. But we've set something in motion here. So that has to be either conditioning. My feeling is it's the early, we, we're starting the early onset of imprinting. And that has to be a tool that we should be exploring on a greater level um, when it comes to it. But as I said, when we pull up on one thing, we pull down on the other. So our contact isn't so great this time round. So the next litter we do, we'll bring in another method that we have, and then we've got the whole balance. That's what we're working on now, is getting that balance correct, and we're there now, I think, this last week. Been very busy correcting and leading them on to, um, to get that balance so we don't have that excitement, because the sound is carried through by excitement. And I think a good example of excitement and how that works is uh, if you look at the... Um, 
In Sweden, they're very much into their working dogs. It's about excitement. If you go and look at the dog show from Sweden, Stockholm 2015, you can see how that excitement manifests itself. We want calmer dogs. I, I do. We can use this excitement to get certain things down. Done. But we lose the balance on the way. And I think if you look at the show from Stockholm 2015, you can see what I'm talking about. The Swedes are very much into their working that excitement. Right? And then they're just training. So you've got a choice when you're looking for a puppy. Uh, many people will say, especially here, um, because everybody is training their dogs to a great extent because of the environment that we're living in, um, that you've got two really well-trained dogs, therefore you're going to get a good character. My thing is, it's about raising. You've got a choice, training or raising. Ideally, you want both. <laughs> But raising is far more important than training an adult. An adult is the past and present. These are the future. And that is why we do puppy testing. That's why we feel it's so important, um, because we can, we, we, we can refine the methodologies we're using. We can get better results all the time. We can see it. We've got a result uh, from someone who's independent. Uh, they're coming in, they're looking at the puppies, they're assessing it, and they score it. And then we can say, okay, maybe we'll try this next time. Maybe we'll, we'll be a little bit harder here next time. As I say, next time we have a litter, what we'll do is we'll incorporate um, a curiosity because a dog that is curious cannot be hyper. It has to calm down. So if you stimulate the dog, and then we will calm it down. And every time we, we, we pull on one thing, something else is coming down. It's like you've got this whole ball of string here in my hand and they're all different colors and they've all got little threads coming out and you don't know this is a difficult thing you don't know if i pull the blue string why does the yellow string come down and what does the yellow string actually mean and that's 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 what we, we're trying to find out all the time and uh, as you see we've got a lovely distance on the puppies now they're exploring they're taking their time and doing whatever they need to do and this is what it's about it's now getting that curiosity thing Go, 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 go! And most of them come when they're called now. <laughs> come on, slow coach! So, no, that's basically what we're, we're practicing on. And, you know, it's not so much training, um, as I say, training or raising. Uh, that is the thing. Um, we believe it's that. Most of our competitors in Denmark actually think the puppy test, etc. is a waste of time. They believe the mental description is a waste of time. The mental description is for the older dog. Uh, we do the mental description um, to see whether what we're doing works. And if it doesn't, then we have to figure out why it doesn't work and produce a new technique, a new methodology, if need be. Um, and this is all done before we start actually training dogs to do anything. As I say, I like to leave training to a late stage with the dogs. Um, the only thing I'm worried about with my younger dogs is that they disappear. So recalls, the only thing we work on. Everything else comes later. We let them explore, we let them get out there. Um, and I think it gives you a better balanced dog at the end of the day. So, um, that's why we do the puppy test. Um, hopefully you can see the difference. We'll put the results up. We'll put the video up from the puppy test. But as I say, to get 100% uh, passing the sound and getting maximum results, that's quite something. Um, nine puppies from all pass maximum marks on sound. And as I said, and it's a nothing exercise, very simple. And it sets the puppy up for life when it comes to sound. Very, very simple. The next stage, the curiosity development, we'll be doing that um, at a younger Age. We won't be doing it at this age, it's too late. Well, not too late, it's just aggravation at this age. It's a lot easier when they're <laughs> a bit younger to stimulate that. And this gets our balance back down in the puppies. So then we've got our contact, because every time you do pull on one thing, you're pulling on something else. You pull something up, something else comes down. And it's about finding out what it is you're pulling and what it's affecting. Uh, so that's going to be with the next litter, and you'll see how that develops, and you'll see the results on that. Not going to be a huge thing. As I said, the sound is not a huge thing. It's very, very simple. And most of what we're doing is simple, it's logical, and straightforward. But it's about raising, not training. So that's our video for the day. Does that sound better?